Hello and welcome to this video on setting up Gutenberg in Drupal. Now, if you've been around the CMS world and especially WordPress and Drupal, then you would know that Gutenberg has been an editor in WordPress for about five years. And there was a bit of, it was a bit of controversy, you know, you could say when it came out because people um, really thought that the current way of authoring content um, on, on uh, WordPress is perfectly fine using TinyMCE. But then a lot of platforms have moved over to like this block ed editing tool, similar to Notion, where you type in slash and then you type something in and then you get a block. So a block would be a paragraph, a title, an image, whatever you want. And so it's like block placed, no, what is it? Block content editing or something like that. So WordPress, the WordPress team developed Gutenberg and I've used it on a bunch of my um, sites. I mean, uh, webwash.net is a WordPress site and I've used Gutenberg in, in that. And so because it's open source, um, somebody created a project. Now we have our first question um, and that is, is Gutenberg stable for production? Now I will answer that because that is a very good question. Now I have, well, the short answer is yes, I think it is. Um, it's been around now for a long time, especially the Drupal module. Now I did cover the Gutenberg module in Drupal about more well, five years ago, four years ago in 20, 2019. So before COVID, before the pandemic, before, you know, everything. And I did end it by saying, because back then there was only about a couple hundred installs. And I did mention that I would be wary of, in, of, of using this in production because, because if you think about it, right, if you go ahead and install Gutenberg, create 20, you know, 200 odd, I was going to say 20,000, but 200 odd tutorials. And then all of a sudden you need to migrate over to something else. Well, then you're a bit stuffed because you, because you are, your content's kind of locked in to Gutenberg. And I did end it by saying, I would, I would highly think about, you know, high, I would highly recommend that you only use this if you um, have a team of developers that can take you off Gutenberg if it's required. But now, and this was 2019. So to answer your question, I would recommend that you use it in production because at the end of the day, Gutenberg is developed by the WordPress team. Um, well, I don't want to say WordPress team or the contributors um, who can, who contribute to it. Uh, I don't really know who it is. So when you think about it, the the front end itself is ready for production. It's used by millions of sites and the Drupal integration, as you will see, is actually pretty brilliant and it actually works very well and I do recommend. And I have been thinking of moving my personal site back to Drupal, which hasn't been Drupal for a very long time anyway, because um, I use the right tool for the right job. Let's, 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 let's leave it at that. So, um, so in this video, I'll take you through the process of installing the module, configuring it, and we'll look at um, uploading module, uh, sorry, uploading images, um, chucking in blocks, Gutenberg blocks and Drupal blocks. Now I'm going to be throwing the word blocks around because that's a very ambiguous term. Every system uses the word blocks for everything. So I will try and mention if this is a Drupal block or if it's a Gutenberg block, because it can be a little confusing because what, what block am I talking about? So I will try and mention that. Um, and I'll also show you one of my favorite parts is how it integrates with the Drupal media system. So you can drag and drop images directly from the editor, sorry, no, from your desktop into the editor and it just uploads out of the box, which is great. And I absolutely love that. And that was one of the reasons why I moved away from Drupal for WebWash because I liked the ability of just taking screenshots, writing tutorials and chucking it in there, just dragging and dropping directly into the editor. And WordPress has supported that for ages. Drupal, not so much. All right, let's start off with by looking at the project page. So here, if you search for drupal.org slash project slash Gutenberg, you'll find the project page. And you'll see here that there are a few versions. So we have version one, 8.1, 8.2, and then we have just version three. So you can see, depending on which version of Drupal you're on, you know, just choose accordingly. Um, now I will be playing around with um, version three. It is a beta. It is pretty stable. 
Um, and you can also see here, so from this page, you will see, I believe this will take you to the actual demo page. So this is the official demo page and this is the editor. Uh, this is exactly what you get. Of course, it's going to look, look slightly different in, in Drupal. A few things here will look a bit different, but generally it will, it will look the same. The whole concept is that everything's a block. You can come along in here. You can add a heading, list item, do whatever you want. You can start typing, go slash, blah, blah, blah. And you can just go ahead and type to your heart's content. 